What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to this episode number 169 of Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Eric Kidd. He's Eric Kidd. I'm Eric Kidd. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Hey, you know what I have with me here tonight? I have, uh, I'm not sure what this thing is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get Hillary to sing along with turns into Christmas. I turned it fell out the window. Very nice. Oh. I feel a little more comfortable up here. In the Hello. Hello. Thanks, Gadwell, and everybody else. Oh. <laughs> in all the hustle and bustle of the season, I forgot to turn off my turn on my microphone. Yeah, but I, you know what I said that just before the show? Is your microphone on? You did. I said that to him. My mic's on, I believe. Yes. Okay. Fabulous. <laughs> is your mic picking me up? This is episode number one sixty nine of Category Five. Nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. Yeah? How's your week going? You know, it's all right. Yeah? Took my kid back to Peterborough to go back to university on Monday morning. and it Safe driving? Oh, it's been kind of mad it, out there, eh? We got there safe and sound. It took us three hours and 15 minutes, What I would think, it normally to take? Two. Two? Yeah. So an extra hour and a, yeah. hour and a quarter. It was a bit of a trip. Mm. But that's okay. I'm finding, I'm like, every day it's like... I'm because uh, I'm shoveling off two vehicles and you know get get Becca ready to take tally to school and stuff yeah. and it's like southwestern Ontario they brought in the army to get people out of their cars they're stranded there's 300 cars <laughs> stranded on the highway oh oh got helicopters it's it's wild serious serious stuff this is like yeah. the real deal people welcome, this is Canadian welcome winter welcome to the Great White North where they have to bring in the helicopters yeah it doesn't look so bad out there really no it's kind of a pleasant it's a nice day. pleasant kind of light snow. All right. <laughs> oh, we got so much coming up for you tonight. Lots of fun. Obviously, uh, we're having some fun tonight and, and getting ready with uh, you know our, our last two weeks before Christmas. Uh, and tonight, we're going to be learning to deploy a turnkey Linux server. Sweet. How does that sound to you? That sounds awesome. Sounds pretty cool. We're going to learn how to basically deploy a Linux-based server in a fraction of the time it would normally take to do so to do something like that. Sounds good. Oh, Chris Reich. Uh-oh. It's not actually daylight, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just said there's it's a lot of there. ambient light off the, uh, off the, the tennis courts out back. No, no, yeah. no, no. There it that. is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, what else have we got? We got, uh, oh, we're going to be talking about where you can find some great Christmas music free of charge, commercial free. Oh, really? Yeah. Because, right. uh, you know, it's that time of the year where you want to be able to turn on the radio and not have to listen to a whole bunch of commercials, but catch your favorite holiday hits. <laughs> Speaking of which, you, you were saying something about you may you may have brought some holiday hits with you. What, what was Maybe, that? you know. Okay. Um, we'll see if I can. Fantastic. We don't have to be in tune, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to everybody who's joining us in the chat room at Category5.tv. Uh, lots of uh, big news in technology this week. Hillary is actually going to be uh, joining us right here in the studio, and uh, I told her I would uh, let you know what she's going to be talking about at about half past the hour. Uh, Matt Assay is actually leaving Canonical, uh, Chief Operations wow. Officer, I believe he is, or uh, I guess technically was, or is, is soon no longer to be. But uh, certainly we're going to be hearing about that. Uh, also, commenting, uh, uh, commenting accounts at Lifehacker and a bunch of other websites uh, that are powered by the same commenting service have been compromised. So if you are a user of Lifehacker or any of those services that, uh, that are affected by the, the hack attack, you'll need to change your password. Sounds like good advice anyway. Yeah. So Hillary's got the details for us in about a half hour. Ubuntu may drop GDM as early as the next release in April. Also, YouTube has lifted its 15-minute restriction, which could possibly mean closed captioning for Category 5 TV viewers. Ooh. Very excited about that. Stick around for the details. Also, big news. Uh, it took 33 years to get there, but Voyager 1's space probe 
has finally reached the outer edge, or the outer limits, I guess you would say, I of the solar show. system. <laughs> We're going to hear all about that. 33 years in. Wow. I'll bet the Enterprise could have made it in a fraction of the time. Of course. Of course. Of course. Gadget Wisdom Guru's got his calculator out. He's figuring out exactly how long the Enterprise would have taken. 15.4 minutes, no doubt. <laughs> so stick around for the news uh, from the Category 5.TV newsroom and, of course, the newsroom website at newsroom.category5.tv. So, well, you got some stuff. So how was your week? You My week's fun? been, been right. good. Yeah, it's been busy. Like, I'm still, I'm still kind of coming, still kind of getting into the routine of, like, it's a family of five now, man. Wow. We got Christmas coming up, and we're shopping for three kids, which is exciting. It's, it's such a joy. And, and what did you get for Hillary and me? It's a surprise. Okay. Big Probably the same cool thing you. we got you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm. why, don't we, uh, why oh. don't we do a question? One final mention. Oh, another mention. Tonight's your last chance to qualify for that all-in-one multifunction center from Brother Canada in Category 5. So stick around. We're going to be talking about that as well. Okay, you got some stuff for me. Well, that last question looked <laughs> really, really, really long, so I'm going to go to a little shorter one okay, to start sure. out here. Mm -hmm. All right. This is from David Masters. And hey, hi, Robbie. Hey. What about me? Hi, okay. Eric. Wondered oh, if you have. That. Hi, Eric. <laughs> Wondered if you have an idea about this one. I'm no expert, but I look after a small office network. <laughs> I says to him before when he first comes in, I'm like, make sure you sit forward because the green screen is going to absorb you if you don't. And I, and I just caught you doing that. Your there. hair. Okay. Your, now I can see. Over there that. laughing. You see his hair all flickering green. So. It's all good. See, I don't have that problem. Look okay, that. I'm no expert, Smooth but I look edges. at... Sorry. Go Actually, ahead. somebody asked if that was just maybe a glow off your uh, dome. Yeah, that's not an angel. Cousin. <laughs> it's, it's a halo. Okay, oh, there you it's go. It's kind of hidden behind you there. Oh, there you go. There nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Apparently, David is no expert. I think I read that okay. four times. But he's he looks not, after a small Sounds like he's rubbing network. it in, David. Okay, taking, <laughs> taking care of a network. Okay. Moving along. We recently changed ISPs, but apart from that, nothing else has changed on our network. We are sometimes seeing pauses, network devices disappearing and reappearing, like there might be conflicts, not sure what, or maybe viruses on infected PCs broadcasting packets and occasionally causing the internal network to pause and then come back. Do you know of an open source network monitoring tool that I could start with to try and diagnose the problem? Thanks. Dave from Blacksland, Australia. Hmm. Good day, Mike. Well, Dave, Sorry, that was um, I think in a case where you're having some issues like that, it's good to have a, some kind of hardware in between your internet connection and the computer itself that's, that's uh, connecting to the internet. Um, my router that you saw me set up with DDWRT uh, a few weeks back, DDWRT does give me some amount of monitoring. In fact, you can enable um, full logging of everything, every kind of uh, port transaction that happens on that router. Now that can get a little severe if you've got lots of computers because you're getting tons and tons of traffic uh, logs, but it can also, also help you to diagnose issues. Um, another option, if that's not good enough for you, like if, if that's not helping you to narrow down the problem, um, and DDWRT really does do a good job of, of letting you see some of the stuff that's going through the network. Uh, but you can also get into uh, a proxy situation. Um, so you could have like a proxy server, which would work seamlessly with DDWRT if you wanted to use it as a transparent proxy, um, which is a little more complex. But because you're saying that you're having these kinds of problems, it might be worth your while. Otherwise, a proxy in a small network is probably not a, a, a really, you know, it's kind of a waste of time. But because you're trying to track down a problematic uh, issue, it can actually help you out because it logs everything that goes through and you can put flags on stuff and then you can block things that you don't want to be allowed through. Uh, so I really stand by DD DDWRT because it allows me to um, to set up these kinds of things really, really easily. Um, I'm just doing a quick search here. Just because the one thing I'm thinking is how DDWRT uh, works 
uh, with uh, the Squid proxy server. So if you have like an old computer around, you can set it up, put a fairly reasonable size hard drive in it, and it can become a proxy server, which basically is is a computer on your network that your router pipes all of the uh, network traffic to for WAN-based transactions. So all of your internet web page hosts, uh, or, or uh, like all of the web pages that you're you're serving up to your network, with a traditional proxy setup, you'd have to go around to each computer and tell it use the proxy. Right. With a transparent proxy, it goes through to the router and you you know gets it through the DHCP server. So you don't actually have to configure each computer. Transparent pro proxy will at the DDWRT level or at the router level reroute all the traffic through the proxy. So the proxy needs to have a reasonable size hard drive because it logs uh, and caches. Uh, regularly used websites so then all of a sudden your internet gets faster so there are benefits to it but also it gives you that additional kind of layer of logging because you can see all the stuff that's being that's going through the server through the internet so you need a large hard drive what about on the proxy? RAM and processing on the no, proxy pretty much no okay yeah it doesn't have to be anything exceptional at all that's if you need to go that that far so first step i would say get a, a cheap router that you can install DDWRT on or see if your router is compatible with it and set that at the at the point of entry so because all the communication is going to go through that router turn on your your logging and uh, and keep an eye on it and see what uh, see what's actually happening there if you suspect particular computers turn off the other computers on your network or disconnect them from the uh, from the uh, LAN ports and uh, you'd be able to kind of get a good idea as to what what is generating traffic on your network and the uh, firmware on your router might be a well, okay. Well, DDWRT so, so replaces okay. the the inbuilt firmware. So at dd-wrt.com, mm -hmm. can we sort of reference say, okay, here's my router, because that's yeah, yeah, you can just check and see if it's good. Yeah, they have a uh, like a hardware database at dddwrt, dd-wrt.com, like Eric was saying there. Um, Don't and forget your hyphen. Yeah, and when you get there, there it is. But because I'm on a green screen, I just got to do it, people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So here we go. Uh, t -t 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 router database. He's out of control. I am totally out of control. <laughs> right here, I'm going to click on, you know, how cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so here, okay, what I like to do is I go do to weather. supported device list. Yeah, there's so much we can do. There's so much we can do. It's, All right. There's there's no limits, and there is the uh, there it is. Cool. Okay. So that's that's. Does that? I hope that. I think helped. that. that there's helps. got there's got to be something. I mean, other than installing software on every computer that ma uh, that monitors your traffic, it's it's so much easier just to set something at the entry point. Every time that traffic goes through there, you can log right. it. DDWRT does a great job. Uh, and then you can go from there. So I hope that helps, David. Of course, it's, it's a small office network, so it might not yeah. be as bad. And that's why I say DDWRT, on. it's free. Yeah. I mean, other than the cost of hardware to, to get a router that, uh, that you can install it on, but you can get those as low as 30 bucks if your existing router doesn't support it. So, And even find some old ones, like a, a <coughs> an old Linksys router. It can be found at a, a thrift shop or a, even a yard sale during the summer. You see them all the time. And a lot of times you hear people that picked one up for 30 cents and they throw DDWRT on it. It's a heck of a deal at twice the price. Oh, okay. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, Ron Duguay. Were you speaking? Was I? Was I? Okay. Ron Duguay has a question. Maybe it's Duguay. Hey, but, but Ron. Lean back a little. You like that? Ooh. Okay. It's not that bad, really. It's, it's, it does a pretty good job. Anyways. We'll talk about that after. You <laughs> tell tell us what you think of the green screen. What do you think of the green screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, Ron, you can tell us too if you like. Um, hi, Robbie. Here is my problem. Okay, very slow boot with fresh install of ten point zero four, like eight minutes. <laughs> Tried everything I can think of. Please help. Boy, oh boy. Okay. Um, history of problem. This computer is a dual boot with XP and 10.04. Um, installed so X. We should just clarify, when someone says 10.04, that's uh, Ubuntu Linux. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the release that came out in April of 2010. 
Indeed. Yeah. Yes. They move pretty quickly with their, their upgrades. Don't Every they? six months, yeah. Wow. That is something. Okay, so it's a dual boot with XP okay. and 10.04 Ubuntu. Uh, installed XP and lost the grub. Okay, mm -hmm. could not figure out how to get it back, so I just decided to install 10.10 .10 fresh. Yes, I lost everything, but what was important, I put on an external drive. Ah, he had a backup. See, if it's worth saving, it's worth backing up, right? Okay. Definitely. Okay. 10.10 boot was slow, less than a minute. That is when I noticed that 10.10 .10 was fairly new. Okay? Right. That came I'm, out in October. Right. 10.04, again, with fresh install. Um, do I have a hardware problem? Also, AWN does not show up on the screen, but if I move the mouse to where it should be, the program name comes up. Thanks, Ron. P.S. I might change my Ubuntu drive out to see what happens. Okay. There. So it sounds like you know your way around the system, Ron. Like you, you know how to swap out hard drives and how to reinstall without, uh, without you know, with without losing keeping, all of his data. Well, without losing <laughs> all your stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, that last question there about AWN. I'll just hit that first. Usually, if AWN is Avant Window Navigator, that's uh, when you look at my computer screen and I go like this. Oh, yes. This guy down here, it's, it's kind of a la the Mac dock bar yeah. uh, kind of idea. And you can play with that and make it do all kinds of different shapes. Beautiful, yeah. Shapes it's really nice. Different um, effects. It's quite, quite cool. It helps you to keep your desktop organized, I find, too. So it's a great But you do need a lot of RAM for, for some of the effects. The biggest thing is you need yeah. a, a decent enough video card to have compositing. Yeah. On uh, enabled on your video card. If your video card is integrated and, and is not able to composite or, or run a compositing window manager, um, you're going to have uh, an inability to run applications like AWN because it's required. Um, the way you can tell if you if your video card is going to support compositing, just a really really quick way. But we digress. But it's part of the question. I know system. Uh, I think it's under, yeah, Preferences, Appearance, and under Appearance you'll see Visual Effects. And it's probably set to None in your case. Try setting it to Normal or Extra, and if it, sa if it says No, can't do that, see how I've got all these cool effects? That's compositing, and it's required that I be able to set that to Normal or Extra. If it says that your video card doesn't support that, then you can't enable compositing. That's just just a really, really... But the Easy. dock is still cool, even without those. But you can't have the dock. Oh, no, you can't even have the dock without compositing. Oh, no. yeah, there are other options, other software options for docks that don't require compositing. AWN does. So that's that question, just okay. to get that out of the way, because that's sort of separate. <coughs> As for your booting issue, first of all, if you do m mess up your your Grub bootloader, I recommend uh, the, the Super Grub disk. Which is super yeah, grub disk. It's a free download. And I think oh, let's let's bring up their website. I'm not sure if they have changed the name of modern uh, modern releases. No. So we just got to determine that you you've got the right one. Super grub two disk does not fix grub. Does not fix grub two boots into many systems. Okay, so that's not the one you want. Here's the one. Uh, maybe this one. Fixes Grub, fixes Grub 2. Rest this one tux. here, Super Grub Disk, fixes Grub but does not fix Grub 2. So depending on what version of Grub you have will determine which one you want to download there. That would allow you to fix Grub without having to reinstall your operating system, which would have been perhaps a little simpler. When you installed Ubuntu 10.10, .10, you would have gotten the latest version of Grub, and then you reinstalled over top of that your Ubuntu 10.04, uh, and depending on whether or not you rewrote, rewrote the uh, boot sector of that drive during the installation process would determine whether or not you updated your grub uh, to uh, an older version or what happened there. So you could, of course, use Super Grub Disk and reinstall grub and, and get it working. If you edit your menu uh, list file, <coughs> and tr uh, a lot of people have had uh, an issue with Ubuntu having a slow boot, if uh, quiet mode is enabled. So that's like the splash screen that you, you see when you boot the uh, Ubuntu Linux. Right. You see Ubuntu and then the, the couple of dots that, uh, that kind of sequence through rather than the text flashing by on the screen. 
If you uh, remove the quiet option from your menu list file and you remove a couple of options, I'll, I'll see which, it's like RO and uh, it's on the kernel line. Let's, let's just see here. Into grub. Miller is in quiet mode. Let's just see. What I'll do uh, is I'll certainly post a link. I'll find a forum thread that uh, that gets you through how to remove quiet mode real real quick and nitty gritty. Just a couple of lines that need to be removed, but I want to make sure that I give you the right information because we don't want to break grub. And of course, you can always keep a backup as well. Um, let's see. Doing some quick searches here in Google. All right. So just talk amongst yourselves for Welcome a moment. This would yeah. be a perfect time for you to pick up that guitar. And I could, uh, yeah, well, let's see what, <laughs> what we do here. He's actually going for it. Who <laughs> tuned this thing? This guy's pretty good. He's kind of fading into the background, but he's pretty good. You sure you want that? Oh, I thought you were going to. We having fun yet? <laughs> we could sing. No. <laughs> You're Googling. You're doing, you're doing okay. great there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do, I will, uh, unless somebody in the chat room has it, RO, quiet, splash. That's what we want to remove from the kernel line. RO, quiet, splash. And then after that, you'll see just the word on a, on a lone line, quiet. If you remove that and then reboot, You'll, you're going to see all the text flash by your screen, but it should be a lot faster on boot. Cool? <laughs> okay. And, so it, and that was while, all background noise you while hardware okay. is, is potentially a, an issue, I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't say right off the bat that it's a hardware issue at all. Um, it could just be a, a grub issue, something about your, your hardware. Uh, some people have said if, you know, if they have Wi-Fi of a certain chipset, then that can cause slowdowns with boot as well. So it's it's really a diagnostic to to try to figure out which kernel module and stuff like that it is. But that's probably your most likely case. Remove the line R O quiet splash from the end of your kernel line, and then remove the word quiet in menu.lst. Okay. And I hope that helps. And you may need to reboot. Uh, I missed part of that. Uh, yeah. Okay. The, the first point was that XP picked up a virus. He was booting sure. 23 seconds before that. That's what caused all this grief. And then he reinstalled everything. And broke up. Okay. It's always XP's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gates, thank you. Well, th because what happened is he got the virus and then he reinstalled Windows XP. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, overwrote Grub. Right. And then he tried installing Ubuntu over top of as a dual boot. And then that's when everything kind of went weird. So. Party got rough at that point. Yeah, I'll post links to everything that uh, that I found here, and uh, also that includes Super Grub Disk. So, um, and in your case, it might have been Rescatux. I don't know how to say that. It could be like Rescatux. Be like Rescatux. There's, a, there's a little uh, penguin there. It looks like mm -hmm. he's wearing a tux and rescue. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. There he is. I'm just guessing. Good looking it's a little, fella. A little freaky. Cut out his eyeball and put a word on his chest. <laughs> and there we have it. All right. All right. Where? How? How can we be almost halfway through the hour already? Well, because I don't know. We're having so much fun. Exactly. Let's uh, let's take a quick boo at now. You and I were talking about you know what's the easiest way to deploy an Ubuntu server yeah. that has Apache, MySQL, PHP, all that stuff. Lamp, Linux, Everything Apache, MySQL, PHP. And um, 
What was the first thing I said? We, we there's. What's the quickest way to install? Well, the, the quickest, yeah, not just, not just now. In response to that. Oh. I immediately, I thought Turnkey Linux. Turnkey Linux, yes, indeed. Turnkeylinux.org. I'll just get you to pull that up, and and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this, um, just to kind of get you to the point where you can see how easy it is to deploy a Linux-based server. We're not going to get into the the you know how to actually get everything configured and and you can you can look at it kind of click through from there, but when you go to turnkeylinux.org, you can look through and they have pre-built Ubuntu-based Linux servers. These are virtual appliances to be run in a virtual machine. So what we're interested in tonight is the LAMP stack. So again, that's Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Okay, there's also Drupal, Joomla as appliance, WordPress. So what this does for you, a domain controller, for example, based on uh, powered by Linux. So these turnkey Linux virtual machines are already pre-configured. It's it's all about the you know that spirit of community and giving back to community. Their their pardon me, their mandate is basically save people time. You know. Mm -hmm make it simple for somebody to deploy a server because if you wanted to build an Ubuntu server with PHP, MySQL and Apache get it all configured it's not a lot of work but it takes more than five minutes yes for sure so what we can do with turnkey Linux at turnkey at turnkeylinux.org there it is there there we go once you've picked the type of server that you'd like to deploy and remember these are going to be virtual appliances so you can deploy more than one using a virtual machine or multiple virtual machines okay in an environment where you've got you know a business class server with say a dual Xeon system like two processors or four processors you're gonna have so much power you could be running so many virtual right, machines right, it's, right. it's unreal so and that's what a lot of companies are doing these days we're not buying a whole bunch of servers instead we're buying one incredible server and turning it into multiple servers using virtualization. So I'm going to grab this LAMP stack appliance and you'll see a brief description. This comes with all the basics to get you started with a LAMP stack computer. So there's a pre-built virtual machine VMDK image so that would be compatible with your uh, VMware based products or you can convert it over for uh, virtual box or in our case we would want to grab the ISO image which will allow us to burn that to a CD and then we can install that on our own virtualization platform or even if you wanted to put it on an actual dedicated server you could oh, do that okay. as well so now uh, for the sake of the demonstration I've already downloaded that and uh, the magic of television the magic <laughs> of television because we know that we have a finite amount of bandwidth here and we've learned that uh, it's not good to download no. Big ISO files no. during a broadcast. We've broken things before, haven't we? We have. We have. <laughs> 168 megs gets you this thing. And it's it's an ISO file. So once you've got that, I'm just going to bring up VirtualBox. So I chose the ISO instead of the VMDK because um, I wanted to set it up in VirtualBox. Okay. If you're going to do this in VirtualBox, now actually I'll, I'll kill this. There's a couple of things that you need to do. First of all, remember this is based on Ubuntu. So when you create the virtual machine, you want to tell it that it's a, an Ubuntu virtual machine. Because our turnkey Linux is based on Ubuntu. As far as your storage system, I've mounted my turnkey lamp download, the ISO file, onto my CD-ROM drive. And I've uh, uh, turned on use host IO cache on my SATA controller. Now the other thing that's really important because you want to be able to access this server from outside of the virtual network. You want to be able to access this from a real network right. from your computer or inevitably you want to be able to launch it on uh, the World Wide Web for in a, in a case where you're launching a, a true LAMP server. So in that case we need to make sure because by default if you're using VirtualBox your network is going to be set to NAT which is basically going to hide it from the outside network so you're not going to be able to actually get access to that. What we want to do is we want to bridge the adapter and set it to whatever your Ethernet card is. Now in my case because I'm using my laptop I'm on WLAN on the wireless network so right. that's fine. 
In your case, it's probably ETH1, something along those lines, or ETH0. So now I'll, uh, I'll boot up that machine for the first time. And that, remember, has got the CD, <coughs> pardon me, the CD inserted. And there we are greeted with turnkey Linux's uh, welcome screen. So we can choose to do a live, uh, live boot. We can install it to our hard drive or boot from our first hard disk. In this case, we want to simply install to our hard disk. Oh, look, that's what you're going to see after you disable quiet mode. Something like that. All right. So that's, uh, that's going to boot right up into the virtual, basically the installer for this virtual machine. You're, you're not going to believe how quick this is. I'm already impressed. Yeah? Well, everything's kind of in, yeah. it's, it's all in one place. It's all there. It's all ready to go. Well. And we're just kind of watching this, just kind of going up. There we go. This is a demonstration of turnkey Linux. And we are installing a LAMP stack server. So here it's asking me what I want to do with my hard drive. Just to show you how easy this is, make sure you read the prompts, OK? I'm going to go guide it and use my entire disk. I want it to overwrite everything on my virtual hard drive. Yikes. <laughs> Remember, you've got to have a backup if you're doing this on a true system that you have stuff on the hard drive. Uh, write these changes to disk, I'm going to say yes. This is a virtual machine that I just created specifically for this demonstration. So there's nothing on the hard drive that I don't, you okay. know, that I, I would be afraid to lose. It's a virtual hard drive too. So the other nice thing about virtual servers, you can take them from one physical server to another. Right. You can back up that whole virtual machine, move it to another server. Now what about the hardware on the other server? When That's you take the thing. It, one or the next? it doesn't matter it doesn't because matter. it's all virtual hardware okay. as far as the server is concerned. The only place that it matters is that the host computer, the actual physical mm -hmm. server, has to have enough, um, enough RAM and enough CPU power to allocate RAM and CPU to the virtual right, machine. So. But as far as which computer you're hosting on, as you can see, I'm installing this on a virtual machine on my laptop. I could then take that to my desktop on Windows, on Linux, on any platform. It could be a Windows 2003 server with a virtual machine so, you know, with a, either VMware or VirtualBox installed and be able to run it on that server. I can then deploy it on any computer that I like. Yeah. It's, it's already prompted me uh, just for a root password. This has got to be a really, really strong password. That's your root password. I've entered it twice. Your MySQL root password. Again, make it a really, really strong password. I'm not doing so because it's so just, just a demonstration. Uppercase, lowercase, exactly. numeric, and some specials. Yeah, and if you're not sure, do a Google search for strong password generator. Oh. And uh, you'll be able to just whip out a, a password yeah. just like that. Those are great. You want to have like Especially extra. when you've got people on your network and they're, oh, I forgot my yeah. password. They gave me a new one and I've forgotten it. Well, that's all it was. Our server's done. Wow. Installation is complete. You need to restart your computer. Let's do it. And there goes my virtual server. My virtual machine is rebooting. Now, I've still got the CD in the drive as far as it's concerned. We'd want to eject that from our computer or unmount it. In my case, I'll just boot from the first hard drive just because we're live on the air. And uh, we'll see what happens here. <laughs> and literally, Hillary, this, is, this only takes like two minutes to set this up. So she's like, well, it's news time. It's news time. There must be a song for that. <laughs> You've got a song for everything. So, so here I am booting up into my new server for the first time. So the first time it boots, it's going to you know, go through the configuration. It's going to ask if, it, if I want to install the security updates, which I didn't get in time. It's going to actually install those. So this will take just a moment to download and install the security right. updates. We should write a song. It's almost news time blues or something. You know? like there we go. <laughs> oh, it's almost news time. Oh, yeah. Eric Kidd and Hillary. Installing a lamp stack. And a virtual machine. It's almost done. Just getting the updates from the server. Probably not that in, okay. Yeah, 
Are we having fun yet? <laughs> Fantastic fun. I'm going to let that install. We'll get Hillary over here. And, and get, just uh, in case you just tuned this, this is in fact Category 5 Technology TV. <laughs> yes. Sure and it's is. almost news time. <laughs> Do you know anybody who does today? guitar repairs? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's, uh, I'm going to let that keep going, and uh, I'll get you to switch spots with Hillary so that she can come All on right. the news. All right. And... Uh, and, and we haven't seen Hillary in so long, like in person, in the flesh, in 30 frames per second. So wow. this is, this is uh, pretty exciting for sure. The um, ceremonious. And we've got a monitor out there, to, and I'll show you the rest of the, uh, okay. how this works as well. Cool. Well, Hello, got to... world. Hey, Hill. I've just materialized out of nowhere. Surprise! Welcome to our Christmas set. It's very festive in here. It's looking, looking pretty good. Cheers. I like it. Cheers. A lot. It's yeah. Marvelous. It's it, it's amazing how things change like even in the short time you've been away. Oh, I know. Like you've done so much like there, rearranging and yeah. the new HD going on. We're and working the on green it. screen. We're working Hello. On it. We did way better than that other co-host who's been filling in for. Her. He's he's pretty awesome. He's too. pretty <laughs> rad. He's pretty awesome. I would go as far as to say that he is cool beans. <laughs> There you, go. Whoa. there you go. Speaking of cool beans, I know that you've got news and you oh, want to. Yes, I do. You want to check out your your cool beans virtual set. Oh yeah, oh yeah! I'm excited to see what will happen. Avec la new nouveau green screen. Okay, that was. I'm done with the French. I'm excited to see what goes down. <laughs> dun da da da! I wish I could play guitar so I could do my own theme song. I'll give you. It. Here you go. Beauty. From the Category 5.TV newsroom. On Wednesday, Mattisay, Canonical COO, announced on his Canonical Voices blog that he has decided to leave Canonical, the company that makes Ubuntu Linux. Assay leaves Canonical to join Strobe, an early stage HTML5 startup that builds mobile apps. In his blog post, Assay says that he has enjoyed his time with Canonical and comments on what he has learned by working with James Silber, Canonical CEO. He writes that he has greatly missed the day-to-day -day interaction with customers and partners that he has had while working in the trenches with past employment, and that this is a part of what has made him realize that while being a COO was a good experience, it's not quite what he wants. Jane Silber responded with a thanks and good luck to Matt Assay um, by posting on the Canonical blog site. The commenting server, which allows users to post comments on several popular websites, including Lifehacker, was itself hacked. Hmm. This happened on Sunday, resulting in the compromising of all usernames and passwords used by that site, and a handful of other sites powered by Gawker. On Monday night, Gawker sent out an email to all its registered users, alerting them that, in fact, their uh, account had been compromised, and it is urgent for each user to reset their account password. In a post on the Lifehacker website, the management of Gawker Media says, we understand how important trust is on the internet, and we're deeply sorry for and embarrassed about this breach of security and trust. We're working around the clock to ensure our security and our commenters' account security is moving forward. This is yet another reason it's a good idea to use different passwords on various websites. If a hacker obtains your username and password for one site, what are the chances, you, the chances that you use the same one on another popular site, like Twitter or even Facebook? Keep your passwords safe, people, and if you use any Gawker-based services, such as Lifehacker, make sure to reset your password immediately to avoid your account being further compromised. Currently found in Ubuntu's blueprints for April's release of the Linux operating system, there are plans to drop the GNOME Display Manager in favor of LightDM, a new multi-platform display manager. According to the Launchpad blueprint, LightDM is faster, more reliable, has a simpler code base, and supports more uh, use cases than GDM. The blueprint is marked as low priority, so while we may not see it in Ubuntu 11.04, we can expect Ubuntu to once again shake things up in providing a fast and flexible desktop, desktop operating system. In efforts to cut down on pirated and illegal content, YouTube at one time limited its users' videos to 10 minutes. You'll remember Category 5's The Meat feature uh, from those days, where our wonderful volunteer Dave had to spend tireless hours editing down episodes of Category 5 to fit within the 10-minute restriction. What a ton of work! Then in July, YouTube increased the limit to 15 minutes. But what they didn't tell its users is that they were watching to see who would be naughty and who would be nice. 
On Thursday, YouTube pulled uh, out their list of nice users, uh, dropped their accounts in a hat, and selected a bunch of them to suddenly and unexpectedly lose the 15-minute video restriction. The users on this list are uh, YouTube broadcasters who have not violated the terms of use or copyrights and who were selected to be able to upload lengthy content. We're pleased to announce that Category 5 TV is among the elite to have their 15-minute YouTube video restriction lifted. And for the first time ever, a one-hour unedited episode of Category 5 Technology TV is now available on our YouTube channel. This will open up new doors for distribution, but perhaps more the one, um, sorry, one of the more exciting features um, on YouTube will be um, to have more accessible versions um, to people of uh, varying abilities. So, uh, in fact, YouTube provides automated speech to text closed captioning for the hearing impaired. So that would be really rad for all my deaf friends um, who watch Category 5 if that could come into play. So you can take a look at the Category 5 YouTube channel by visiting cat5.tv slash YouTube. Voyager 1, the most distant man-made object from Earth, has reached the outer edge of the solar system after a 33-year journey. The NASA space probe was launched in 1977 and passed by Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, ha -ha, and Neptune before veering north. It is now 10.8 billion miles from the sun, traveling at a speed of 38,000 miles per hour. The solar wind, uh, a stream of charged particles spewing from the sun, has slowed to a speed of zero and is moving sideways rather than outwards, marking the end of our solar system. You can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category 5 TV newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget, Wis Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our community of viewers. If you have a story you think is worthy of honor mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. From the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by Planet Calypso. This massive multiplayer online game is available as a free download from cat5.tv slash Calypso. Now, once you've got it downloaded and installed on your Windows computer, make sure you say hi. And there's something for everyone here on Planet Calypso, from hunting to mining, crafting, and just plain socializing and having fun with your friends. You can download it for free at cat5.tv slash Calypso. If you're a Linux user like myself, of course, this makes it worth the dual boot. Cat5.tv slash Calypso. I'll see you on Planet Calypso. Welcome back to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 169. Mm -hmm. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hillary Rumble, back in the flesh. <laughs> It's nice to see you. It's great to be here. How it really you? is. I've been great. Yeah. Now that I am free from the impending doom of the snow, I was cooped up for here. three days and kind of lost my mind. But um, now I'm back, and I'm alive, and I am home. Mm. Hooray! Welcome back to Barry. Can you believe <laughs> the snow? You. No, it's mental. Pretty unreal. Mental. Pretty unreal. End of the world type stuff. Even. It's just like that. Mm. Our lives are a bad movie unfolding End before of the my solar life. system. <laughs> Beyond Uranus. <laughs> okay, Eric Slide said Uranus. it's Uranus, and I don't like, I feel like Uranus sounds funny, but I that know sounds Uranus silly. sounds yeah. funny too, so I don't actually know. Mm. <laughs> so sue me. I don't know. You know okay. that? We've got some Haley's Comet. Oh, sorry, Haley's, what's that, Eric? Haley's Comet, Holly's Comet, you know, just tomato, Hillary's tomato. Comet. Pipeline, pipeline. You know? <laughs> yeah, I understand, I understand. <laughs> That's that's oh, actually pretty man. cool that we uh, we've we've achieved yeah. that after 33 years though. It took us a while. But that's that's pretty neat. We did it. <laughs> an accomplishment for the human race. Yes. We are one step closer to mm -hmm. populating Uranus. Uranus. <laughs> Thanks, Hill. Oh, Thank no you. No problem. Hillary. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for the good times. Good, good. Hey, Eric. Hey, Rocky. Your server's built. There we go. Oh. Hey. It's already, it, it rebooted and it's good to go. Very nice. You may access the LAMP appliance <coughs> by going to 10.0.0.113. Hey, let's do that. Let's. So yeah. 10.0.0.113. And there we go. Turnkey LAMP. So I am now actually connecting to that server. A virtual server. Super zippy. Nice and good. Ask me, uh, it's going to give me a secure connection. 
I understand the risks. I'm going to add an exception, get my certificate, permanently store this exception. And here we go. We are into turnkey Linux. Root. And hopefully we remember the password your we root just password. installed. Yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> here we go. So now you're straight into Webmin, running Ubuntu, Linux 8.04.3. Which I suppose they'll they'll need to update to the to the latest LTS. But here you go. You're all set. Servers, Apache Web Server, MySQL database server, even Postfix mail server, SSH, all that stuff. And it's all configurable right through Webmin. So you can set up your virtual servers uh, for uh, Apache. And you can go through and play around with this. It's really quite cool, all the stuff that you can do with Webmin. It's so easy to use. It's a nice... Uh, Nice interface, as you can see. But uh, that's that's all there is to it, to uh, getting your very own virtual server set up with Turnkey. Literally, like a five-minute install. Not too Very shabby. Brilliant. So, and then you you know you configure your virtual servers and you get it going, and you're good to go. And that's for LAMP that we're looking at tonight from TurnkeyLinux.org. But of course, again, there are tons of different types of Turnkey servers that you can download and install. Uh, you can download the pre-built. Uh, virtual machine hard drives, and uh, and run them on your virtual virtual machine system. Gravy. I'd Gravy. say. I think so. Um, hey, you don't have chat room up. No, Look I just that. noticed that, and I was like, maybe oh, yeah. I should get. Yeah, it. Eric is like, I, I get didn't on, notice anyone get saying this. anything. I gotta get on this. No, I just this. said I never got logged into the chat I room. <laughs> I was up getting my Hillary's, super Hillary's anti spyware coffee you, cup. I'm here, here world. Here she comes. If you've been saying anything, I don't know, but now I will. The end. Um, but people. Hey, D-Man, eight ten. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, you've hey. You've got uh, you've got some stuff going on, Hillary. I've always got stuff going on, even yeah. from afar. I did, but now that I'm back in action, I do as well. And I've just noticed that there are a couple of pretty rad testimonials on our website. I think are worthy cool. of discussing. First one comes to us from Al Ket, who is in Pristina, Kosovo. Hey, Al Ket. Um, and he gives us four sons and. A cloud. A cloud? Yes. Cloud? But four suns is very sunny <laughs> and I think is great for tanning. Anyways, Alcat says, I just wanted to thank Robbie for his time and support that he's giving me in the Category 5 chat room, uh, even when the show is off air. I recently got a new job as a web developer and I'm, I'm using Ubuntu there. I had some issues which Robbie helped solve for me. So thank you, Robbie, and the Category 5 staff. Hey. You're very welcome. Um, um, yeah, so I, sh that's I should say, like, I don't, I don't always watch the chat room, and I can't always watch the chat room, obviously. But if I see your question come in, and, and I have the ability at that time to, mm. to help you out, I, I do my best to try to help. I do work full time and stuff, so it's, it's sometimes difficult. <laughs> but, so I, I, I like to say, like, I can't commit to always being there in the chat room, but uh, usually there's somebody in there. I know Gadwell spends uh, quite a fair amount of time in the chat room and it's always nice to see him in there and, and helping people yeah, yeah, through yeah. their problems and uh, I think at any given time you'll you'll find somebody's in there to to give you a hand so it's not just the category 5 team it's also the category 5 community oh, who's, for sure. who's there for uh, for each of our viewers for sure. thank you very much for the uh, for the viewer testimony mm -hmm. there okay sorry about the cloud <laughs> unless it's like cloud computing and you want to that's what it. I I took that's that as say. All right. just saying the cloud good guy says <laughs> <laughs> um, I have another one here. Five Sons from Calvin T. Hughes Jr. Hey, Calvin. I watch Category 5 TV live every Tuesday when I'm home, or I watch the rebroadcast. I love the show, and um, it's it, the great how-to segments that you have. Based on the yes. show's introduction, a pogo plug, I purchased one and have been totally satisfied, satisfied with it and consider hey. it um, money well spent. Recently, I contacted Pogo Plug support with a question and suggestion. They responded in less than 24 hours um, and took my recommendation as possible feature upgrade. Um, this is the email that he sent. Oh no, sorry, that he received. Um, Thank you for contacting Pogo Plug support. You are correct. When adding folders of photos to a slideshow, they are arranged by date. Your suggestion is great, and I'll add it to our list of new feature requests. Um, Cool. Yeah. So you really that get that really sense neat. of community spirit yeah. from even Pogo Plug, even though it's a closed source kind of service. I do. I you do get that sense that there's a community there, and that the the developers of Pogo Plug yeah. really want to give to their community a, a fantastic service. 
Um, I know, like even with my older pogo plug, I'm, I'm constantly amazed that the firmwares get the latest version. So every time on the show when we mention all these great new features on the new pogo plug, <laughs> it's also available on my first generation pogo plug, True. the little the little yeah, brick yeah, thing. Yeah. So it's that's it just shows that and I think that's really cool that that they s support their community so mm -hmm. well. So, but glad to glad to hear that you're happy about the pogo plug as well. Uh, if you're curious, if you're if you're watching right now and you're not sure what the pogo plug is, check out past shows at Category 5. Check out our YouTube channel, uh, cat5.tv slash YouTube, and uh, you'll you'll find out a whole bunch about it. Oh, yeah. It's cool. We love our pogo plugs. Definitely. Um, and lastly, I actually got another testimonial here. Um, comes to us from Robert Streets from Greenville, South Carolina. Hey, Robert. Hi, Robbie. I just want to wish you and all of Category 5 a Merry Christmas. Thanks, you too. Even though you're way up there in Canada and I'm way down here in South Carolina, I feel like we're good friends. I've been hanging around Category 5 for two years, um, and I've seen you come from a show with bad lighting. <laughs> <laughs> to this. <laughs> and sound to a well-produced broadcast, and I've always learned more than I knew when the show was <laughs> over. I don't know why you do what you do, but I'm sure glad that you do. I would have never guessed that I could use an operating system like Linux. Thanks to you and what I've learned using Ubuntu, I've been using Debian uh, for a year now. Fantastic. Uh, if I run Linux, if I can run Linux, anyone can. Thanks for an informative, good, clean show. You are indeed a good friend. Truly thankful, Robert Street. Robert, I'm sorry about Hillary's <laughs> dirty comments tonight about the planets. Forgive me. I know. <laughs> Inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question uh, that came in by email from uh, from Ashley that I'd really love to address because I, I want Ashley sure. to know. I know that in the email, Ashley has even commented that, that I was unavailable in the chat room today, and that's disappointing for them. And, and, and I want users to know that I am mm -hmm. as, as available to them as I possibly can be, but I'm one person. And, and so the community is really what oh, it's yeah. all about. Uh, but I do want to, maybe we could just quickly look sure at thing. that and, and see if there's anything that we, can, that we can come up with for you. At least put that out to the community, Ashley. Uh, your question so that if there is somebody who could provide more help, I know I already did try in the chat room, but it didn't sound like uh, my advice was, was of help to you, uh, but I'll let you yeah, sure read thing. that through. Hey Robbie, it's Ashley. Remember me from a while back um, when you first started recording, I was watching from your first episode. Those were the days where <laughs> I could come on chat and ask any question, you would answer it. Um, and basically she said, yeah, she was in the chat room and this he. is her, oh he, yeah. sorry. Um, do, 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 skipping to the problem at hand here. Basically, I have a Dell Inspiron 6400, um, 6400, yeah, laptop, and I've been having this issue over and over again for a month or two now, and I really need to use my laptop. Anyways, this is the issue. Um, Windows XP is what's running, mm -hmm. and it says hardware malfunction. Call your hardware vendor for support. Um, NMI, uh, parity check slash memory parity error. Mm -hmm. The system has halted. I've been told by many people it's the memory and to change the RAM. So uh, some have said that it's the hard drive and to change the hard drive and some people say just to toss it. Um, so he's tried changing the RAM. He's tried a, all different stuff. Yeah, tried changing the, the hard drive. What I, what I yeah. wonder, Ashley, and, and people are right on when they say that it's, it's probably the RAM, because when you get a parity error like that, usually that means that there's an issue with um, the, the parity of multiple sticks of RAM. So if you have one stick that's running at a particular parity or a particular speed, and then you have another stick that's running at a different speed, they're conflicting and they're losing data uh, when trying to save to, to RAM. So usually that's what that is, is, is either bad RAM or misconfigured RAM or two different sticks that are incompatible. Uh, if that's not the case, because that's what I suggested earlier today, that it sounded like that could be it, I would want to know, first of all, if you've hibernated the computer, it, it, sometimes that can cause some problems with Windows if you've swapped hardware around and things like that in hibernation mode. Um, but also, have you taken that hard drive from one computer and moved it into another computer? If, for example, you hibernated it in computer A, and then uh, thinking that you know you want it to save that state, and then take that hard drive out and move it over to computer B and try to boot up that computer. Now Windows is going to say, I can't come out of hibernation because the memory that I'm trying to reallocate coming back from hibernation is not the same memory, mm. it's not the same computer as that computer A, because now my hard drive is in computer B. So it sounds to me like that's possibly what's happened here. 
So what I would want you to do, if, if that's what's happened, is take that hard drive back out of that computer that you've put it in, put it back into the first computer where you hibernated it, then boot up the computer. Get it out of that hibernation state. Bring it back to a standard state. Shut it down completely, properly, and then you can move that hard drive over to another computer now keeping in mind that Windows XP is going to blue screen on boot because it's different hardware, it's not going to be able to boot. You'd have to do a recovery install uh, of Windows XP over top of that, but at least at that point you'd be able to. Uh, but alternatively, you could also try, reins if you don't want to go to all that trouble and there's nothing on the hard drive that you need, you could also uh, go through the process of reinstalling Windows XP before, I, I would do that before trashing any, uh, any hardware. Good guys mentioning Memtest uh, in the in the chat room there, and, and that's something that Ashley and I had already uh, established earlier today that uh, that he had uh, he had already tried Memtest and it didn't turn up anything. But if you haven't run it through a couple of cycles, I would still do that. But like I say, it sounds to me like you've hibernated, move the hard drive onto another computer. It's trying to come out of hibernation on that other computer, and it can't because the RAM is different and it's giving you a parity error, which seems confusing because even if you run memtest, it's saying that the RAM is fine, but the RAM is different, so you can't come out of hibernation in Windows XP. Hmm. Long shot guess. There you go, that's what I think it is, Ashley. Give it a whirl. Good luck. It's worth Let time. us know either way. If yeah. I'm right, I will expect a viewer testimonial. If I'm wrong, just kind of <laughs> send me a private email and, <laughs> and we'll mention it on the show. Oh, dear. Good luck, though. <laughs> That's really uh, about all the time that we have for tonight. It's it's so good to have you back, and Thank you. you're back for a couple of weeks just for our Christmas specials. I and, am, I yeah. am. So it's gonna be nice. Remember better than my webcam. It, it's a <laughs> the frame rate is a little better. It's pretty cool. I like the backdrop you've got going on though. The purple looks nice. It's it's Thank good. Thank you. So, but, uh, but we do have some connection issues there for sure. Um, that, that's all the time we have. We do have that printer to give away. We've got a, a Brother Multifunction Center printer. Uh, if you're in Canada, you will qualify to win this printer. Make sure you get onto our website, category5.tv. Click on do Interact it. and look at the bottom of the menu. You'll see a chance for you to win that printer. We're going to be giving that away next week. All right. Merry so, Christmas to you, Merry lucky Christmas. viewer. Get and, on that. Uh, all the information is there. And, uh, and we've got lots of other stuff coming up, too. So if you're outside of Canada and ineligible un <laughs> to win that prize, I, I'm sorry, but we do have other stuff. Had oh, another yeah. company contact me and said, we can only give away in the United States. Is that okay? I said, that's perfect, because all of my viewers in the United States are sad about the printer. It's true. <laughs> so we do have stuff coming up for you as well. Awesome. That is all the time that we have for tonight. You have a fantastic week. You have a great week. Thanks, you too. Yeah. Eric? Bye, Eric. Thanks, my friend. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you next Tuesday night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.